Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not vegetables are harmful if you have a thyroid problem. Now believe it or not, this is a question that actually comes up fairly frequently and there is some merit to this, to this question. Uh, the logic goes something like this. Certain vegetables, especially those that are found in the brassica family, have a goitrogenic effect on the thyroid. Therefore, if these compounds somehow harm the thyroid, shouldn't we avoid these vegetables so that we aren't damaging the thyroid and causing more thyroid problems? Now, from a logical perspective, this sounds accurate. It sounds like it makes sense. But in practicality and in the clinical setting, it doesn't hold a lot of water. So we're going to explain just that. So first of all, what is a goitrogen? A goitrogen is any compound or substance which blocks the uptake of iodine into the thyroid gland. Why is this important? Because your thyroid requires iodine to produce thyroid hormone. It requires it to produce T4 and T3. So if you are blocking the uptake, if you're not allowing that iodine to get inside of the thyroid gland, it doesn't have the building blocks necessary to produce thyroid hormone. Now downstream, what that will mean is that you'll have a reduction in T4 and T3 levels, which will cause an increase in TRH and an increase in TSH, which will stimulate the thyroid gland to enlarge, that's called a goiter, um, and that process will continue as long as iodine can't come into the thyroid gland. That's why these things are called goitrogens, or goitrogens, or they have a goitrogenic effect on the thyroid. What you need to understand though, is that not all vegetables or not all goitrogens have the same impact or they, they don't have the same goitrogenic impact as other things, okay? Now what that means is that some things are more powerful at reducing the, the uptake of iodine. Some things technically do have a goitrogenic effect but are really not relevant because it's so tiny that it doesn't really have an impact. Um, and other things are actually, they have a, a serious goitrogenic impact and that can actually cause thyroid problems downstream. So the question is, where do vegetables fit on the spectrum? And the answer is for most people, they do not need to be avoided, okay? For most people, if they are consuming vegetables, there is a net positive benefit to consuming vegetables downstream outside of their impact on, on, as a goitrogen on the thyroid gland. In addition, the amount of goitrogens found inside of these vegetables is usually not sufficient to cause thyroid problems unless you are consuming a lot of them, you are not preparing them correctly, or you are in a group of people who is more susceptible to those things. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But for most people, consuming vegetables is perfectly safe and will not cause a problem. Now, if you are somebody who tends to be on the more sensitive side, there is an easy solution, and that is to take certain vegetables and simply prepare them by boiling them or steaming them. The process of boiling and steaming your vegetables will, will reduce the goitrogenic impact that it has on your thyroid gland, in some cases by 50% or more. So all you need to do is, to, is prepare the vegetables correctly um, and you'll reduce the goitrogens and that won't cause an impact. In fact, for most people, that's an easy way to do things. If you're a thyroid patient and you're worried about it, all you need to do is prepare your vegetables accordingly and that won't be a problem. Most of the problem comes when you consume raw vegetables. So if you're consuming the vegetables in their raw state, especially those vegetables that have high goitrogenic compounds within them, usually found in the brassica family. So things like vegetable, or I'm sorry, things like kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and collard greens. These are things which tend to have higher goitrogenic um, uh, or chemicals and found inside of them or they have a higher content of goitrogens within them. But again, if all you need to do is to boil them or to steam them, you'll reduce that content and then you can consume them more frequently. Now having said that, there are certain people or certain groups of people who are more at risk for the impact of goitrogens than others. Okay, So let's talk about that. The first would be those people who have iodine deficiency. Now think about it for a second. Imagine you are in a state where you don't have enough iodine inside of your thyroid gland. Now imagine you are um, you are consuming a food which is blocking what little iodine you have from getting into your, th to your thyroid gland. You're going to make that situation worse because you're consuming foods which are blocking what little iodine you have from getting into your thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. Now this is actually fairly common, especially among thyroid patients who are trying to actively avoid iodine. There's a lot of, lot of people out there who are saying that iodine is harmful and dangerous for the thyroid gland. So they are intentionally avoiding foods which are naturally high in iodine, which is putting them in an iodine deficiency state. So these people are more sensitive to even small impact, the small effects of goitrogenic foods and goitrogenic compounds. So you need to be aware of that if you're someone avoiding iodine. And by the way, this is one of the many reasons that I don't necessarily avoid or don't necessarily recommend that thyroid patients just unilaterally avoid iodine because iodine is still required regardless of the thyroid state that you have. I have other videos and tons of other information on that, but I, if you are somebody who is avoiding iodine because you think that you do poorly on it, make sure that you take that into account when you are looking at what type of vegetables, how much you consume, and so on. The next group of people which should be cautious are those people who are pregnant and or lactating. These uh, women, obviously, these women have a higher demand for iodine compared to the general population. So if you are blocking what little iodine they usually get, they're not going to be able to produce enough for them and their child or their baby. 
So you have to keep that in mind if you are nursing or pregnant. And this is exactly why the iodine needs for women who are pregnant or nursing are higher than that of the general population. In fact, they're usually about double. So in that case, um, you would want to consume more iodine or at least pay attention to how much uh, vegetables you're consuming. But as I mentioned previously, you can still eat these vegetables as long as you're preparing them correctly. That means boiling them or steaming them. Lastly, my final recommendation to you is not to avoid vegetables because you think they're going to be goitrogenic to your body. It is almost always far better to consume vegetables even if they have a slight goitrogenic impact because there's going to be a net positive effect on inflammation, which impacts your thyroid, the nutrients content of those foods, and also they're taking the place and filling your stomach for other unhealthy foods that you could be consuming. So imagine you're somebody listening to this and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna avoid broccoli for, you know, I'm gonna avoid broccoli after listening to this. And it, instead of consuming broccoli, you're gonna consume a bagel or something like that, right? If it comes down to a bagel or broccoli, it's almost always gonna be beneficial to consume the broccoli, even if it has a slight negative impact on your thyroid. The bagel is going to have a much higher negative impact on your thyroid and health in general. So never, never substitute out a vegetable for an unhealthy processed food, right? If you want to consume a different type of vegetable, which may have a lower content of goitrogens, that's perfectly fine. But do not eat unhealthy foods in the place of vegetables. That is going to lead you down a path which is going to cause more problems down, uh, downstream and uh, later on in your life. So the question as to whether or not you should be, whether or not vegetables are harmful, the answer is for most people, vegetables are not harmful unless they are consumed in their raw state and in significant amounts on a daily basis. So for most thyroid patients, you know, three to five servings uh, a week is perfectly fine, even in the raw state. And if you're one of the sensitive groups I talked about previously, then just boil or steam them and that should solve the issue. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you haven't already, make sure you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information, all designed to help thyroid patients just like you. So if you like this sort of stuff, you'll like that. So otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.